Hey everybody, Jason here again with GDT Basics and the video question line. Today's topic is GDT tolerance analysis with an emphasis on the profile callout. Today's question that was submitted is how does a profile callout on datum C of a rectangular prism affect the allowed range for the basic distance to the opposite side? So let's take a look at this example drawing here, albeit it's an incomplete drawing, but it does get the point across of the relationship between these two profile surface specifications. Now again, this is an incomplete drawing, but we do see datum feature A identified here, datum feature B identified here, and datum feature C identified right here. Now, the question that was submitted outlined three options of interpretation. This first interpretation option would say that we have four millimeters on the right surface, which is true because the feature control frame lists four millimeters as a total amount of tolerance, meaning the surface can deviate this way two millimeters and this way two millimeters. If that's the case, and then we interpret the feature on the left, which has a six millimeter total tolerance, we see that we can go three millimeters this way and three millimeters this way. If we assess those two specifications together, the distance between these two sides could be, outlined in this option, 95 to 105. Now, I'll argue that's not correct, and we're going to show you why. So option one gets us close, but it's not quite how those two surfaces act together. Let's take option two into consideration. Option two, again, gave four millimeters to the right surface and six millimeters to the left surface. However, you'll see that these tolerance zones are shifted over to the right. So the option number two tells us that we would have distance between the sides could be 96 to 106 because this surface can go zero this way, and this surface can go six this way. That would grow the nominal 100 basic dimension to 106. And on the other direction, we would see none this way, and four this way, shrinking the 100 down by four millimeters to 96. So our total range, or the distance between these two surfaces, could be 106 to 96. And again, this option's not correct either. It does get close, but it's not all the way there. And lastly, we have option three. Option three outlined that the right surface would only get two millimeters or half the tolerance zone, and the left surface would get six millimeters centered at 100 millimeters away from the previous surface. And so we could see we would have a distance between these sides resulting in 95 to 103 because the left surface could deviate left three millimeters and the right surface could deviate nothing right. And so that would result in a 103 millimeter maximum size. And then conversely, the left surface could deviate in or right three millimeters, and the right surface could deviate in or left two millimeters, subtracting five from the 100 basic dimensions, resulting in 95. Now, this option's also not correct either, but let's go ahead and dig into as to why these three options are not giving us the full picture. What's truly missing is the interpretation of the feature control frames themselves and the datums listed. So let's interpret these datum reference frames, and we'll start with this feature control frame over here. It's listing A first. A is this back surface over here, identified right here. So we have datum A, which is derived from datum feature A. In other words, if we have three points of contact on this surface over here, we're going to establish a datum plane from the three high points. And then datum B is established from datum feature B. In other words, datum feature B is going to give us two points of contact somewhere along its surface to create a plane that is perpendicular to the primary datum, but then touching those two high points off datum feature B. That's all we need to do in order to interpret our profile of a surface callout right here. And that tolerance zone must be perpendicular to A and perpendicular to B. And that's it. And in fact, we could swap out this profile of a surface callout for perpendicularity, and the interpretation won't change. We're just controlling perpendicular to A and perpendicular to B with a tolerance zone of four millimeters. That four millimeters will control orientation as well as any level of form error, whether we're talking about profile of a surface or perpendicularity. However, we'll continue using profile of a surface just as the question stated. So now this tolerance zone can shift left or right. There's nothing controlling the location of this tolerance zone for this right surface. And that's perfectly fine because we're qualifying datum feature C. We're saying we don't need to locate this surface because everything else is located to it. And as long as that surface can sit inside this zone, no matter what sort of form error or orientation error it may have, 
it will pass the specification for a profile of a surface or perpendicularity of four millimeters. Now the interpretation for the left side is with respect to A, B, and C. So now we need to include datum C. Datum C is derived from datum feature C. Datum feature C is this surface right here, which won't be perfectly perpendicular to A or B. But what we would do is establish datum C, which is a plane that is perfectly perpendicular in theory to A and B. And it only uses one point of contact from datum feature C, which is this surface right here, to establish its location. Now we have a zero, zero, zero point, and we can take measurements for this surface with respect to this datum plane. We don't measure the location of this left surface with respect to the surface right here. We measure it with respect to the datum C. That is because we listed datum C here. So now we can measure 100 millimeters over from our zero, again, not from the feature itself, but from the zero or the datum, and we can center our six millimeter tolerance zone on that 100 millimeters away from the datum reference frame. And as long as our surface is inside this tolerance zone, we've met our specification for profile of six millimeters. This is truly controlling the location of that surface from datum C, 100 millimeters plus or minus three millimeters. This is the true interpretation of this left surface. And it's with respect to the datum, not this surface because it's a listed as a tertiary datum feature. So the surface can exist here or here. And as long as that surface is inside that tolerance zone located from datum C, we've met our specifications. So we can see that if we were to take a caliper and put it on the surface and measure from this point to this point, it's not going to be 100 plus or minus three because we're measuring the location of an element to another element. We're not controlling the location of the surface with respect to the datums. We're just checking local elements. And while this isn't something that actually has to be reported, it is a good sanity check or as designers would utilize it, making sure that your tolerances, when you do apply them to the drawing, don't result in an issue that you didn't foresee. In other words, if you allowed a lot of tolerance here, let's say you allowed 10 millimeters of tolerance, a lot of room here, your datum didn't change. It's still gonna be off the high points and the location of this left surface with respect to that datum feature is going to not change either. But what did happen by growing this value is you're saying, I'm gonna allow a lot of form error, thus I'm going to allow this part to get really thin potentially. If you don't want the effect of the form being loose here, you would utilize this four millimeters. And you could see that the worst case measurement of 93 would be the result. Because from the high point of datum feature C, we can go in four millimeters. And we'll establish datum C from that high point, And we go over 100 millimeters to establish our six millimeter zone. And we can go in three millimeters from there. And so if we add that three millimeters plus the worst case four millimeters from our tolerance here, we would see we have a worst case measurement of 93. And now we can see that also if we go the other direction from that high point that established datum C, we can go over 100 millimeters and then add three millimeters. So our worst case deviation with a caliper or a micrometer in the other direction would be 103. So as far as measurements from a caliper element to element, we can be between 93 and 103. But if we're trying to locate any element of this surface with respect to the feature control frame that's controlling that surface, it would be 100 plus or minus three from the datum. And so that's why really option one, option two, and option three, we're not truly describing everything we need to understand with respect to that right surface. So here again is a, just a quick tolerance analysis of these two feature control frames together. The big thing missing, the big thing we need to remember is the location of our tolerance zones, the orientation of our tolerance zones with respect to those datums. Uh, and those datums are perfectly perpendicular to each other, even though datum features won't be. We cover a lot of that in our fundamentals course if anybody's interested. Hopefully this helps uh, shed a little bit of light on the topic and allows you to dig a little bit deeper. Thanks for submitting the question. Have a great day. Our goal is to be your best source for GD&T information online. It's important to us that everyone involved in engineering and manufacturing have the chance to learn and better understand GD&T on your prints.
We have many free resources to help you get started on your learning journey. Subscribe to our GD&T community using the link in the description below or visit our website. Test your knowledge with our GD&T and print reading quizzes. Download helpful charts and access articles